How many things do I own that I will probably never use? That's what we're going to find out today. January has come, the month of new life and rejuvenation. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, that's the beginning of spring. No, where I live, spring is death. It's a time of oppressive humidity where you can't step outside without sweating your eyebrows off. January, on the other hand, means the busy Christmas season is over, so it's the perfect time to refresh yourself, plan for the year ahead, and throw out all the old junk you don't need to make room for the new junk you don't need. That, by the way, is an accidental perfect segue to the subject of this video. Recently, I came across the concept of minimalism as a lifestyle. I knew it was a thing in art and in decorating, but I never really thought about it as a lifestyle. It kind of makes you think a minimalist might live in a tiny house with just a mattress, a floor lamp, and a disco ball for party nights. Apparently, it really just means only keeping the things that you use, or, well, minimalists really like to use the word value. Things that don't just sit around collecting dust without actually serving a purpose. My first thought when I learned this was, haha, all those foolish people keeping things they don't need, so silly. Then came time for my yearly January cleanup that I talked about earlier. I looked around my room and I realized there are a lot of things we keep because we think we like them, or we think we need them, or that we might use them someday, but we won't really. As an example, let's take a look through my way out the door drawer. That's this drawer, right here. It contains all the things I might need to grab on my way out the door. These flashlights are from a pack of eight. They're really cheap and none of them work very well. The mug has no aesthetic or nostalgic value for me. It came for free when I got my graduation pictures printed. I used to put my keys in it, but now it's empty. I used to collect pocket knives, but that doesn't really interest me anymore. There are still a few that I like. I'll put these aside for now. So that was just one drawer that I use every day and I found nine things in it that I never use. So this made me curious, and I decided to sort through everything in my room and see how many things I own that serve no purpose. Now I'm happy with my room on the surface, but when I started looking into areas that I rarely touch, uh, it's embarrassing how many uh, weird little knickknacks I have lying around that I didn't even realize I still had. A lot of it was things I accumulated as a kid, things I used to use or was given as gifts, and I never really bothered to throw them out because I didn't need the space for anything else. They were just out of the way. I noticed that there seemed to be four categories of things I was getting rid of. The first category was obsolete or inferior things. The flashlights are a good example. I was keeping them because they technically still work, sort of, but I'm always gonna use my good flashlights when I need one, so these will literally never be used. Take a look at these shirts. Do you see the problem? Well, there is no problem. They're perfectly good shirts and that's how they trick you. I was given them because someone got a good deal on them, I kept them because they fit, but I've never worn them, and never will, because I have five other shirts that I prefer and would always choose over these. I think clothes like that are probably a common one. Another common one is books. I like to reread good books, but I don't plan to read most of these again at this point. I've read most of them many times. I'll keep a few favorites. Books are usually kept anyway because they're decorative, and that's fine. That's a good purpose for something to serve but I think I want to give these to people who will read them. The second category is things I used to use but don't anymore. I used to collect business cards. I also used to use this hair goop that strongly resembles Vaseline, but not anymore. Growing up, I experimented with a lot of different drawing tools and styles, but at this point, I've pretty much settled on my preferences. I don't use brush tip pens or colored pencils or markers, and I'm not really a fan of Superman either. The third category is things I kept just in case I might need them one day. These coasters were part of a set. Uh, I didn't really like the colors, but I kept them just in case I might need two extra coasters, of all things. I'm the only one who eats in this room. There are a lot of spare computer parts and cables that I'm probably never going to use. If I did, I can buy any one of these for just a dollar or two. I also have this really nice pair of binoculars I was given for Christmas a long time ago. Great binoculars, but the only time I'm actually likely to use them is on a mountaintop, and when I go hiking to the top of a mountain, I'm not going to want to carry these. And finally, there's just a lot of junk. Seashells that I collected and shoved in a drawer never to be seen again. A lap desk that I don't use often enough to bother with. I was planning to fix this watch, but now I remember why I didn't. It pinches my arm hairs. There are a lot of reasons why it's healthy to clean out things like this. You make more room for the things that matter, it can make you more mindful when you're spending money in the future. When I go to get something from my way out the door drawer now, it's a lot easier to find what I'm looking for, even if only by a few milliseconds. Having fewer things also makes it easier to keep a room tidy. I did stop for a minute and think, now wait a minute, if I have room for all this stuff and it's all in out of the way areas, why bother? Then I started to think about what it would be like to move to a new house. 
When I get my own place, I'm gonna have to pack up everything and transport it to my new home. Probably about half of what I own would come from a drawer or a dark closet somewhere, be taken to my new home, and then go straight into the darkest recesses of that house. There, it would rot for another few decades. I don't want to drag this stuff around with me, even if it's just sitting out of the way right now. In a way, I'm still kind of pulling it along with me through life. I'm pretty sure everything I kept would actually fit in the back of my car, which is really freeing to think about. One unneeded item taken from the room probably wouldn't make much of a difference, but they add up quickly. In total, I found 221 things in my room that had no reason for being there. That's a lot of stuff. I did find a few things that I don't use regularly, but that I found myself not really wanting to part with. I had a few favorite pocket knives for my collection. This one is actually the first pocket knife I ever owned. Another item that has sentimental value is this key fob that I was given when I graduated from high school. It's too big to use like I used to, but it doesn't do any good sitting in a box either. This is my bible from when I was a kid. This and the key fob are difficult to part with because they were both picked out carefully by loved ones and both signify important parts or times of my life. I've heard that one good plan for items like these is to start a photo collection. Nostalgia is a great purpose for an item to serve, but for these, a picture stored on a hard drive will do this trick just as well. Some items can also be repurposed. You might find a new place for something where it'll be useful more often, or even get creative and make meaningful items into decorations. But what about this Bible? I have a nicer one now, so this one never gets used. If I have kids of my own one day, I want to give them their own, and not one that's old and worn. It's not really the kind of thing I would want to decorate with, and I don't think I can repurpose it. Is it really that bad to keep it? I mean, I could pull it out once in a while and thumb through it, but that wouldn't really give me anything a photo wouldn't. Should I really carry this little piece of nostalgia with me through life, from house to house, closet to closet, when I'm barely ever going to touch it? After all, the memories aren't in the book. It's just a physical gift that served its purpose. My mom would kill me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and more importantly, I hope it gave you something to think about, whether you have cleaning out to do or not. This is a new style of video for me, so I'd appreciate it if you go down into the comments and tell me what you liked and what you didn't. While you're in the comments, tell me about one thing that's in your room or your house that you might need to get rid of. We all have something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm wearing pajama pants right now. That's fine, you can't see the pajama pants. We are ready to roll. Even that, by the way, is a perfect accidental subway. Subway. Is a perfect accidental subway. Make room for the new junk you don't need. I hear if you stand like this for a really long time, it makes you feel confident. It means the busy Christmas season is over. Season. Oh, it's not well diffused on my cheeks. That's not good. I need lines. I need diffusers. I don't have diffusers. This is the best I could do. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Am I moving around too much? Am I moving around not enough? And I never really throwed it out. Throwed it out. I never throwed it out. Man, I wish I had time to diffuse the lights better. See these, these white lines on my cheeks? That is because I did not build good enough light diffusers. Okay, here we go, I got some props. Now what am I supposed to do with this? There are a lot of sp Wait. What on earth? I hear a clock ticking. I don't have an analog clock in my room. There are a lot of reasons why it's healthy to clean out things like this. Uh, you make the room... No, uh. Don't say, uh. There are a lot of reasons why it's healthy to clean out things like this.
what's the what's the third reason? Dark closet. It's a closet. I need to edit that. I keep reading it correctly, and I don't want to read it correctly. I want to read it differently. That feels better. Good. Good. I think it's good. Looks good. It's good. Right? I did find a few things that I don't really... I did find a few things that I don't regularly use, but that I've had a... That I fat. That's good. I think I've done it.